Well, no, it's interesting because in real life when Fred died, um, I, I, he was sick for seven years. I don't want to go into this much, but he was sick for seven years with Alzheimer's. And, um, I, and I said, gee, I wish I could cry. I'd feel good mm -hmm. about it. See, none of you have to deal with this because you're much too young to have any idea about Maybe your dog died or somebody's brother-in-law died. But, uh, and then when he died, and I, and I saw him, and he died in his sleep, I started to cry for about 45 minutes. It was a tsunami of tears. I just cried and cried. It's as if my um, body was crying. And I thought, why am I, I can't stop crying. It was just very strange. Uh, you see, everything is subject for photography. Not just strangers' faces down the block, somebody you don't know. Your own truth is what you know, and everything else is assumption. It's like reading 100 love stories and falling in love. When you read 100 love stories, that's photographing other people. But when you fall in love, you know exactly what it feels like. So it's about what something feels like, not what it looks like in my. But you always, or maybe not but, you always, emotions, to express them, to see them, to photograph them were always very important in, in all your work. Yeah. Well, that's Whether it's still or movies. It's a sense, it's a, I've been very introspective in a, in a world where it's all me and brag and make it bigger and, yeah, make it as big as possible that might be interesting. No, 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 no. It's, it's an intimacy. It's, this is the idea. Like, if I tell Elizabeth a secret, you know, and I will whisper it in her ear, it's that kind of thing you want to have with whoever happens to look or at what you read or what. It's that sense of intimacy saying, you know what? Guess what I thought of. Isn't that interesting? I mean, it's like that. It's not, wow, you know, bigger, Googler, Warhol, Warhol. You know, no, it's not Warhol, not Warhol. Should be about secrets. So in those films that we saw, <clears throat> Ian, the first one was very rambunctious and lots of colors yeah. and everything. And then the last, which I know is your most recent, is very quiet. Yeah. And is that sort of like, is that a development? Or maybe the next film is crazy again? Or, or Well, I'm thinking of doing a dance. That's Anybody good. got good legs? <laughs> That's, I thought that was fine. I say anything just like, it, I don't care what it sounds like. Uh, what was the question? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> No, is it you know, a progression in your movies, or is it uh, in your, I, gu I guess you call it little films, right? Mini, mini movies. Mini films, mini yeah, movies. Yeah. Uh, we've done almost 30 now, and one principle. I love doing what I've never done before. I feel uncomfortable in my comfort zone. There's a wonderful, wonderful lyric from Stephen Sondheim in Gypsy. He says, some people can be content playing, paying, Playing, playing bingo and paying rent, living life in the living room. That's what it's all about. So you have to have history. I have a lot of history. I'll be 88 a week from tonight. I'm an old 88. Remember the old 88? Only old people know the old. Uh, see, I think that's strange. I, I thrive on that. I never know what I'm going to say next, and I should actually be more careful with what I say, but I'm very free. I'm a, Every day I get freer and goosier and looser as I get older. Most people get tight and tighter and ass tight. Mm, constipated. But you know, you, the, nobody's going to free you unless you free you. You think the church gives a fuck about you? Who gives a fuck about you? Really? Really, ask yourself that. I so, think I have to rein you in. Already? Well, let me ask you some very pertinent questions, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, films. Before you did films, yeah. you did still photography. Yeah. But you, um, I think you're very famous for having broken rules uh, in, I think, 68, um, when you did your pictures, you, know, you wrote on your photographs. That was a sin, a crime. How did you become so courageous? I don't know. When I was 14, I left home and went to Texas. Of course, my parents asked me to leave. They gave me a one-way ticket. I thought that was strange. But I've always had that. I've always had a sense of adventure. I grew up in the uh, still town south of Pittsburgh that went belly up in 1968. So I'm very left-wing. Uh, Democrat, you know, old-fashioned CIO person. 
And uh, I love this chance of adventures. I became a photographer by going to Russia when I was 26 in 1958 with a borrowed camera. And if I had never gone to Russia, I'd never been a photographer. And it's always been like that. I want to know Pause. your pictures about the, you photographed in Mexico, the Olympics. Yes. What, was, what were the pictures like? Well, they were pictures of Mexico. With the uh, <laughs> Mexican government hired me to go to Mexico, of course, to photograph the Olympics. PR pictures for the. It was wonderful. I spent two weeks there just photographing everything, you know. And then there was Dimitri, the weightlifter. Mm. <laughs> That's an in joke, out joke. I'm out in that. I mean, Did so, you fall in love? No, 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 no. no. But uh, I became a communist, though, for him. No, but the sense, <laughs> see, nobody gets any of my shit. But that, <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't care. But um, I love doing commercial work too. Uh, when I was started out, I knew nothing about <coughs> photography, and I'll tell tell you the danger of f photo schools. Don't listen. The danger is that you will learn rules. Schools have to teach you something. But, <coughs> And when you learn rules, it's much harder to unlearn rules than when you learn them. But if you just, you should be like a sponge and take in absolutely everything. So I was, I was on a job early, early in my life, and a, a young student came, a woman came up and she said, aren't you? And I said, yes. And she said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm making a living. And she said to me, oh, I would never sell out. I, I want to say, honey, you have nothing to sell. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing, nothing. That's a huge. I, being young is horrible. It's all backwards. Age should not be a punishment. It should be a reward for a lot of people. But it isn't a punishment for you. Not for, for me, you. no, because... You, you, you don't do that. You don't I, do punishment. Yeah, I, I love doing what I've never done before and making mistakes. If you're only going to be successful because you're perfect, then fuck it. Get over it. Grow up. Mistakes, you'll grow more out of your mistakes. I'm doing sculpture now, and I made a mistake, and it opened the door to everything. I hadn't planned on it. So make mistakes, but learn from them. You know, anyway. It's like that. So I'm going to go back to your photography. Um, what I, you know, what, sort of in the 60s, photojournalism was the yeah. big language yeah. and um, you broke with that and what I think is sort of funny is like when you look at photography now or, or strange um, what you did then now everyone does you know everyone yeah. it is free now you yeah. don't have to um, you can do narratives without doing linear stories yeah. and you did that then yeah. well it's because I was 26, 27, 28, and I didn't know much about. I know a lot about photography. I, any any intelligent, not intelligent, but any sensitive person would have picked up on, you know, Robert Frank, my hero, thump, 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 and uh, I mean he's the absolute best. Uh, Gary Winogrand is a Robert Frank wannabe. Friedlander wanted Frank. Robert, there's nobody better than Robert Frank, and I'm very opinionated and. Um, <laughs> Uh, I forgot what I was talking about. I got so dazzled by Robert, the RF. Yeah. Okay. What was the question? I forgot. Yeah. As I tell you, you forgot. I forgot. <laughs> if for guessing. Yeah. Oh, you were in the army in yes. Germany. Yes. If our, 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 okay, o over Leutnant in der Panzer in Deutschland. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, the worst time of my life, two years in the army. The worst? The worst? The worst. W R S T? I was S T. Worst? That? Worst. I was a verse there. Uh, a lot of fat. But. No, the thing is that I wish we should have the draft. If there was a draft, nobody would go to war. There would be no wars, and all the rich kids like Trump with a bone spur. I once had a boner spur. Is that the same thing? Never mind. Yeah. What, you didn't see that coming? Where have you been the last hour? Anyway. No, no, uh, but... You're wandering again. You're wandering again. I do that a lot. W -A -N. I, I tend to go spin off on no, whatever my mind takes me, which is actually more interesting probably than what I was saying in the first place. So I never said that before. If you're only comfortable saying what you've said before, grow up, get over it, boo-hoo, nobody cares. Okay. Are you a Buddhist? No, no, uh, but, no but I'm, um, I'm very much interested in spiritual things. 
I was, I was one five certified Catholic, and I, I believed every lie the Catholic Church ever told. All churches are religion, all, all religions are institutions only designed to perpetuate themselves, and they dangle heaven and hell, which don't exist. You know, with uh, sin, you're, Catholics are born a sinner. If I'm going to sin, at least I want to have a sin. Why am I born? A, and then you're going to go to hell. There's no hell. There's no hell. It's, you know, it's a big fucking business. Did I say the F word again? Luckily, I don't know what it means. But uh, <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, no, no. And okay, we're talking it's about Buddhism. Yeah, Buddhism. Um, no, and, uh, and then I got involved in Kundalini. I did Kundalini for nine years. And now, oh, I'm preparing myself for my own death. Uh, because in my, well, anyway, it's going to happen one of these days. And um, I'm taking care of business. And I'm, oh, I'm going to take uh, mushrooms. Anybody taking mushrooms here? Put your hand. The guy that's <laughs> floating in the back, he took mushrooms, I can tell. You've done it too. I think you're taking them right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, I want to get my mind in that place. I want to get in rhythm. This is called being, here's Dwayne alive. Just plant alive. Plant dead, Dwayne dead. What's happened? The energy. It's energy. I'm energy. I can't stand young fogies, you know. Oh, this is so boring. Mm, this is boring, boring. No, you're boring. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Buddhism. No, back to Buddhism. Buddhism. Yeah. yeah. You're all the energy. You just don't know it. But I really want to know it. I really want to know it. This is my chance. This is the trip. And, uh, you know, and if, right now, when I'm, you know, ancient, soon to be a major motion uh, funeral. <laughs> I thought that was funny too. See, I don't need an audience. I just giggle myself to sleep. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we're back to Buddhism. Well, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think it's the last cause. <laughs> I think we're going to drop that subject. We're going somewhere else. Let's see. Um, yeah. But you said you will want to do here and now is important. This is it. That is kind of a Buddhist concept. It is. It is, totally. But it's, it's a human uh, aspect. You know, in the, in the movie, oh, when I did the movie about dying, about Fred's dying, um, you see movies with people dying all the time. Bang, bang, uh, bang, bang, uh, you know. But nobody ever makes a movie about the point of somebody who is dying. And that's the point of somebody who's dying. And if you know anything about the literature, there's a lot of talk about, uh, about, uh, ghosts and being greeted by people when you get old and all that sort of thing. And I have to admit, I did see my mother's ghost, and she said she never liked me and she never would. Even dead, she said, I still don't like you. That's a mean mother. And, uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, I saw a ghost in our house in the country. So I don't know, but see, all those people who know, they don't know. But if you don't know, then you know something. Have you um, ever seen Monty Python's? I love Monty Python. I figured that because they're like the first, you know, the first movie, the first little small film. No, you call it mini film. Um, I just kept thinking of Monty Python because well, the Monty. way he uh, uses oh, graphics I, and know, everything, I, you know. I love the Bureau of Silly Walks. Do you know yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah. That's the Bureau of Silly Walks in one gesture. No, it's wonderful. I love people who, when, Diaghilev, when Cocteau was a young man, look him up if you don't know who that is, and he was going to, Diaghilev asked him to work on a ballet, to collaborate on a ballet, and uh, Cocteau said, uh, what do you want? And Diaghilev said, astound me. See, I don't want to be bored. Andy Warhol, and I knew Andy, the most boring person in the world. Here's a phone call from Andy Warhol, ring, 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 ring. Andy Warhol was like talking to a telephone off the hook. Hello? Uh, 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 uh. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, 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 uh. Hi, Andy. Uh, 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 uh. Dwayne, you're fabulous. Uh, 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 uh. Bye, Andy. No, boring, boring. Bo he raised boring to an art. There was nobody more boring. And he ripped everybody off. He stole it. But I had lunch with him one day, and he was giving me advice about my career. And he said, be very careful with your ideas because everybody will steal your ideas. And he sold everybody's idea. He was the biggest thief in town. Oh, Jesus. Anyway. Did you ever photograph him? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, apropos portraits, I think um, you told me that you have a special way in how you think about portraits. 
Uh, portraits, I'll give you a hint. Portraits and truth. Well, I never think about portraits. I don't think about a lot of things. I do think a lot about other things, though. But about portraits, I hate all the bullshit that goes with portraits. These are the words you have to watch out. Oh, you really capture his soul. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> portraits are mostly... Uh, well, I once wrote a thing that said how the geography of my face has changed and all the lines that had once been streams are now becoming rivers. And how my face is, you know... No, it's... You can... You go someplace to photograph somebody, I don't know who they are, you know, and capture their soul. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's, it's a minute I spent with Kim Novak in the Plaza Hotel. Think about that. And, uh, no, but you know, the celebrities are easiest to take. Uh, they do their celebrity thing. I like surprises, I like to, I went to photograph Jean Moreau. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was always startled. She really was alive. She was about this tall. She was a real, she was actually a midget. And she was very small. I sat on her and I didn't even know it for half an hour, <laughs> except for that tickling sensation. But anyway, so she walked in the room, like, who's this little old lady? And then, so we, I took her into the, uh, <laughs> I was going to say elevator shaft, into the fire exit. We, we did her picture there. Uh, and it was the 19th floor, my lucky number. And there she sat under the number 19. What are the odds? Psychic, psychic. So, but you, can't, you don't capture anything, and, and I really hate, uh, there are ki different kinds of portraits. There's a kind of portrait which I call stand and stare. Everybody does stand and stare. This is stand and stare. And I could understand why. And then I have something I call the annotated portrait. I did a picture of my mother, my father, and my brother, and then I wrote about it. And, you know. Now, if you looked at this picture of my mother, my father, and my brother, uh, they looked nice. They had their portrait face on. Everybody was okay. But, you know, you wouldn't know by looking at that picture that they hadn't fucked in 40 years. They, hadn't, they didn't even like each other. But there's the picture. Bullshit, bullshit. So I don't know how you get to that. Now, wait a minute. You, I, I, right, you, I you, have yeah. a minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, I know you uh, like the work or you admire De Chirico. Mm -hmm. Um, Balthus and Magritte. And, Magritte. Yeah. and you photographed them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I have two questions. How did you convince them that they could, would be photographed by you? They didn't know who I was. Uh, well, I mean, that's just the no, thing. No, 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 no. I had a... Here's my story about Magritte. In 1960, uh, I opened a copy of Harper's Bazaar to look at the photographs, and there was this photograph of a nude woman, and standing in front of her, she was holding a mirror, and she was reflected in the mirror. I thought, how did that guy do that? The woman's behind the mirror, but she's reflected in the mirror. Then I realized it was actually a painting. And that's when I first met René Magritte. And he was not a household wart. If you don't know who he is, you better look him up. Forget about the war hole. No, but you really... Uh, and, Go to those people that contradict you. See, my value to you is to contradict you, not to tell you what you already know, but say something you really hate, you know, really. That's the best thing I can do for you. So uh, I didn't understand that. And, uh, and I was at Sydney Janice for 26 years. That was a gallery. And Sydney told me in 1958 they had an exhibit at Magritte. They didn't sell one painting. There was no interest in him. The art world's very... F do not try to be an artist, please. Do your work and maybe something good will happen. I don't know. Anyway, but well, oh, Magritte. So I found somebody who knew him. And in 1965, I wrote a letter to him and he, he said, okay. So I went to Brussels. Could you believe it? I'm walking down... down you got yourself there? Yeah. Walking down the street, and I'm looking at, let's see, four, seven, like tonight, 214, 218, two, and, there, and there it is. And I go to the front door, and there's a buzzer, and it says Magritte. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You know, I, I mean, like, go, and it says Picasso. They exist, or, you know, any myth. And I pushed the door button, and he peered at the door, just like that. And I was there for a week, and it was made, totally amazing. He was very generous, very kind. And I know, oh, the second kind of portrait I like is a portrait that is done in the manner of the person. So when I did Magritte, because I was so aware of Magritte's work, I could use Magritte's vocabulary to photograph him in the same style. Uh, and that's it, that was it. Is that, is that good? That's good, that's good. We'll take that. There's a nice Magritte right here. 
That's very good. I, I took that. And that's in his studio. He didn't have a studio. His little, he had a, he, he was very formal, wore a suit all the time. I never saw him paint, though. But, and you, there's a dressing room, to, and he worked in his dressing room. That was in his dressing room. And not, no paint splashes anywhere, no torn jeans. He was total contradiction. That's the key word, contradiction. He was contradiction. I contradict you. You seem to have so much fun in your films, or at least not the, not the end, but the, the first three. No, no, I had and, fun. And the Ulysses is just like, okay, it's like the day, you take in the day, and you just, you just go yes. like crazy. I have fun. When I do, I do work, I don't know what I'm going to do with these movies. I do it for the pleasure of doing it. I have no destination. I'm doing this sculpture now. I have no destination. I just do it. If you don't get sheer pleasure out of the energy and the, I always happens. I think of something, and then I finally get a photograph, and I, there's my thought. I'm doing a series now. I'm going to have a show in Paris. It was it Wuhan? No, Paris. And I've taken a series of idioms. And for, picture this. There's a guy sitting there, and his arms in a sling, and standing next to him is a guy with a salt shaker, and he's salting his arm. And the text, the title is, Adding Insult to Injury. <laughs> uh, let's see, there are a lot more. Uh, a verbal, a, a visual pun. Visual pun. And there's, there's one, let's see, where, uh, oh, there's one called, there's a guy reading War and Peace, two guys, and then I cut the book in half, and the book separates, and then they're reading each half, and, then, but, and that one's called Making the Long Story Short. <laughs> and, oh, and then there's one about, uh, you know, don't, don't count your chickens before they're hatched, things like that. And I never thought of that before, and I did 15 of them, and then I did it for a fashion shoot, too. It's just, if you don't have, what's the point of anything if it's just going like, I saw a program by Rothko once, what a pain in the ass. He's sitting there <laughs> contemplating his genius. Hmm. Hmm. And then I made it pink, yellow, and brown. Hmm. Pink, yellow, and brown. Who would have thought of that? Genius. There's more? There's more. Okay. So, um, what did I want to ask you? Oh, I'm going to read you some, um, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little game, and we're going to do uh, true or false? Oh, true or false. Oh, I hate those okay. tricky questions. Well, you know, you have no, you have no choice. Now I have right. to find one. Okay, adjectives. You are impish. I'm impish? True or false? Oh, what time of day are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere with you. I'm sorry. Funny? Next. Mischievous? Say it. Mischievous, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I have a good time. Mystical? I'm interested in mysticism, but that doesn't make me mystical. Mystical is one of those labels I hate, you know. You want to see me levitate? I could if I would, but I don't want to. No, I mean, yeah, no, no. I'm curious. I'm, cu curious. I'm, a, curio That's I'm a curious. Sure. I'm a novelty item. Playful? I'm very playful. And you should see me in bed if you think this is something. But don't go there. Do not think about it. Just the, I'm just putting it on the table for the brave and innocent. Philosophical? What? Philosophical. Yes, it's built into the system. You can't be, uh, you can't be serious without being foolish. You have to, I hate serious people. You know, it is written. Then say, who wrote it? I don't know. But, you know, you, know, you have to be goofy. Yep, I agree. Um, okay, more. You are a storyteller? A, a what? A storyteller? Yes, I am. I'm very verbal, as you might have. One, oh. I will tell you a joke, okay? An old man the is dying. The first tonight? No, I just, I'm just i going to forget it. Uh, An old man is dying. I know a lot of old men dying jokes. <laughs> and, uh, and he can't go up steps anymore, so he's in the living room in a hospital bed, and he wakes up, and he calls out, Margaret, and his wife's not there. Nobody's there. And then he smells chocolate chip cookies, his favorite. And he hasn't had appetite in months. So he, gets out of bed and he gets his walker and he makes it to the kitchen and there on the kitchen table is a tray of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. 
So he takes one, and it's the best thing he's ever had in his entire life. He has never had such a delicious chocolate chip cookie. And as he's about to reach for the second cookie, his wife comes in, and she sees him, and she puts down her groceries, she slaps his hand, and she says, don't eat those, those are for the funeral. <laughs> You don't get it. You're not old enough. Not enough. I'm not going to waste my good I, stuff I on you. I don't think you have to be old to get that, you know. <laughs> okay. And then what How happened? many books have you, have you, how many books were published? Uh, or have you published? Uh, I, well, I, I published 30? about 33. Oh, yeah. Good guess. Yeah. I love books better than exhibits. I don't like exhibits. I love books. I only spend money on books. I stole all these clothes. These are not books. I never buy clothes. I steal. I steal. And how did that happen? I don't know. I'm going to do another book now with Steidl in Deutschland. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like these sequences. It's 50 years since I first did sequences. So it's going to be with a lot of unpublished sequences and stuff like that, you know. I think you have to go. You have to find out where, what your strength, what, I'll give you my secret of success, write this down. You find something you love doing and then you get somebody to pay you to do it. Am it I, should I, only be that easy. Well, what's, what's not easy, but what's, the good things are never easy. And if it's too easy, then you, it's, it's suspect. And my idea of work is when you have to go someplace to do something you don't want to do. And most people work. You know. So your advice for these young people over there in the galleries yeah. to get their book published, what would you oh, say to, get to your them? It's very difficult. It's harder and harder to get a book published. I'm going to publish a book for this uh, young photographer I've been working with. Uh, I may not get it published. It's, it's very hard to get a book published. Number one, they'll only publish a book if you're already well known and you have a show coming up or something like that. But for a new person to break in, it's difficult. But you start small. You, you can do just a little book. I recommend books over people do or do not see exhibits. And it's nice to have a credit for it. But uh, you can send books to people. And they're my most favorite thing. I love James Joyce. I spend all that time working on him. If, I know you probably didn't get half the references. But you, should, you, you know, he's so obscure. I don't get all of him either. But I'm intrigued. He piqued my curiosity. So tell me, how did that film happen? I mean, how did, you, how did it start? I mean, okay. you love Joyce, OK? okay. You like, I love you Joyce. You love Ulysses. A yeah. day is a good way to do a film, right? I mean, yeah. to use that structure, yeah. well, which you did. Yeah, did. So then, I mean, so how did it come about? Well, all things start with an idea. Right. And we should encourage people. You know, here's like this little thing in the back of my head. You know, says uh, something, and then what? What you say? No, here's what you do. I'll tell you. Here's the process. Everybody has a secret, and I mean a secret you haven't even told your best friend, and a secret you don't even want to tell yourself. Here's what you have. Write down your secret on a piece of paper. I would write on a piece of paper. Uh, I did not love my father. Oh my God! How can you say that? I did not love my father? Are you crazy? Shh. And then you take your secret and you fold it, and you put it in the drawer in the back where you keep your underwear, where nobody looks, and with your dirty pictures. You hope nobody looks. And then maybe two weeks later, you have enough courage to write a second sentence. I did not love my father, and he did not love me. Oh, for Christ's sake, get over it. You know, I mean, put that away. And the Chinese say to walk around the world, you have to take a first step. You must take a first step. You don't know where the journey is going to go, but have the courage to make a mistake. Have the courage to make, if, you have to be brave. And brave with your own mind, not brave. There was a picture I never forgave Gary Winogrand for. And he went to a country club party or a frat, frat party at Princeton or someplace. And everybody had tuxedos and everybody drinking or playing a piano. And there was this beautiful young woman. And she, in a, mid of, in a moment of giddiness, she exposed her perfect breast. And he photographed it. Then he published it. Well, I'd like to take a Gary and photograph this fucking prick and see how he feels about it. The idea that he took such a great freedom with that woman's face is really So don't take risks with other people's faces. If you can't take risks with your own dick or your own head or your what, then get out of photography. You have no right to photograph anybody else's secrets.
Wow. Does that's that pretty that's severe. Mean. Yeah. That's well, heavy. Yeah. No, write that down. Okay. And I thought you were a nice guy. Well, I am nice. Play your cards right. <laughs> <laughs> um, age. Age. What, what is good about age? Age in your opinion. Oh, are you kidding? 88? I never dreamt I'd made it. I make two great 44s or three 22s would end up to me or three 22s and one 2030 or to the nth power <laughs> exponentially. No, it's... Your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it is. It's really, I can't wait till I'm going to think of next. No, but, you know. Age. Age. Yeah, no. It's wonderful. I love being 14. I love going to Texas and seeing all these migrant workers and what the fuck they were up to. It was nutty. And, it was, you know, and I hated being in the Army, but I, I did a book. I've used everything in my life. I did a book about being in the Army. Oh, I want to tell you my, my, official, uh, my official idea about being gay. Uh, How did that come from the Army? What's that? Well, I was also gay in the Army, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> here's my, see, keep up with me, come on. <laughs> no, no, uh, you have a mind like mine, you're just not used to letting it go, you know. Oh, I shouldn't think of that. What's this? Anyway, oh, I'll tell you, let me tell you this one first. Fuck, I forgot it. Oh, no, here, here it is. Uh, heteros homosexuality is just like heterosexuality, except it's different. It's exactly the same instincts. I mean, it's love, it's, it's whatever, you know. And, uh, and that's it. It's the same thing. Nature makes 2,000, 20,000 kinds of beetles, 30,000 kinds of butterflies, and according to religious people, you're only allowed to have two kinds of sexes doing two kinds of things. That's ridiculous. There are many flavors. Some people are 50% gay, 50% straight, 90, 20, 100. I'm 1,000 gay. <laughs> there you are. Good. I agree. Any, any, I have another. 1,000 gay. Yeah. I agree. Do I have 2,000? Oh, I have 2,000. <laughs> I see three, the little lady back there with the men's hat. <laughs> see, that's fine, you know, vaguely. I do vague, yes. One of your books is called Mischievous Eye, right? No. Mis no? What's it called? Mischievous. Oh, no, no. They called my exhibit the Mischievous Eye. Oh, okay. it, was a, it was not a book, it was a... Not uh, a book. No. So are you mischievous? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I guess sometimes I like to, my photographs are pranks or... or I, compared to Gary Winogrand, I'm mischievous, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I, you, you, you're not so crazy about Gary Winogrand's work, right? No, no, I'm not. You know that. No, I'm, I'm full of opinions. I, if you don't have any opinions, what's wrong with you? What, don't even go near Trump, please. We won't get near. Oh no, let's, no, let's not. Let's no, not go no, no. there. Is Ivanka sure. in the audience? No, stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. She's history, anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, mischievous. Are you mischievous? Oh, mischievous in the sense I'm curious. I think the one thing that really separates me from other photographers and even other people, I have a huge curiosity. You know, as I say, if I see a woman crying, you can photograph a woman crying, but I want to know, what does grief feel like? I asked my aunt, I, asked my aunt, I know nothing about uh, menstruation. I said, well, you know, what's menstruation? I don't know anything about it. What is it like, you know? Guys like tits and cunts and the whole thing, but they don't want to know about menstruation. How do you put up with that every month? What the fuck is that? I have no idea. So uh, I, she, she said that when she was a young girl, 19, 37 or 32 or something, she began to believe. She didn't know what it was. Nobody talked to her about sex. So what they said was, they said, well, her mother, my grandmother, saw her stuff and she washed her things out in the basement. So she said to Eleanor, go talk to Margaret. What the fuck did she tell my mother? How criminal is that? Why are we embarrassed about sex? Why is it so difficult to talk about it? Why is it dirty? You know, what's dirty is religion is dirty. All this priest fucking children, that's dirty. Don't tell me sex is dirty unless you're lucky. So how did we get from how did we get oh, that's funny. What? How did we get from vinaigrette to dirty sex? No, it's not, they're not far apart. Well this is uh <laughs> I mean come on, dirty dancing. Okay. Dirty dishes. Who likes to do dirty I'll tell you how my mind you wanna know my where that comes from? 
Here's my, don't tell anybody, don't tell my analyst. My brother's a forensic psychiatrist. I give him all my business. No, here's the stuff. <laughs> How does your mind work? The New York Times asked five photographers to do self-portraits for the magazine, and I did a picture of the back of my head. I'm reading it in a book, it, and the book had white pages. In the book I read, I wrote, I think about thinking. That's, my mind is much more interested in my face. Who cares about the size of my nose or my eyes or my pecker? Who cares? I don't even care. See, I can't help it. So here's what happened. I, when I hear, now I want you to think about thinking. You are not a little person in your head looking out through your eyes, listening. No, no. It, oh, here's a recent thing I thought of. I had that idea that I'm here looking at us. This is an event, all right? I hate that. I won't say all right. No, this is an event. But now I realize there is just an event. I'm not looking at the event. I am the event. We're all sharing the event. So there's no me looking at you. There is just the event. Uh, and I wrote a little children's poem. It says, I, I wanted to find the eye of me, that place inside where I might be. So one night, all in my head, I went and looked inside my bed, but all I saw were the sights of seeing, and all I heard were the sounds of hearing, and all there was was me just me. Now that's, that is a spiritual thought. That is a Buddhist thought. There is me just me. There is this moment that we're all sharing together. Anyway, what, what was I talking about? Oh, how, here's how I, so I want you to think about, how, I'm serious. Your assignment, should you accept it, is to think about thinking. And here's how, so if somebody says to me, uh, uh, I'm a little horse. <coughs> no. So I know what they're saying. They have a cold or something. You know. But I also hear Princess Margaret. I think of sea biscuit. I think of Churchill Downs. I think isn't. No, I do all the spin-offs simultaneously of that one word constantly and leads me to all kinds of interesting places. So it's, I'm like a free-range chicken in my head. I just go. <laughs> and I just rain. My mind roams. And you allow it to I, uh, uh, Yes, I, I enjoy it. I love it. Yeah. No, but when I cross a street, I, you know, I pay attention. I don't get hit by cars so far. No, but really, so don't stop looking and start thinking and then start thinking about why am I thinking, how am I thinking, who's thinking, where is it? I just want to, one last thought about mine before I forget it. Uh, I would look, I, I'm very curious about time. Like, I say this is now. No, it's not. This is actually now. No, no, it's not. No, this is now. No, it's not. The minute you say now, it's not now. There is no now. Not now. So time is such a funny thing, it's like a hole inside a ring. It's always now and never then. But when I say it's now again, it's never now but always then. You say you're here and never there. You say you're, but when I go from here to there, then there is here and, oh, yeah, that's right. Then there is here and here is there. And if you think you're very tall, besides a tree, you're not at all. And if you think you're very small, besides a bee, you're 10 feet tall. When we dream, we seem awake, but all along the dream was fake. You say you're I and also me. I know that's true. How can that be? Because I'm not you and you're not me. Time is not what you might think it is and isn't in the wing. So what is more fundamental than time? And what is the one thing nobody ever, and don't show me a clock. Don't show me an hourglass. How do you photograph time? I don't know. That's an interesting subject. That's my assignment to you. Photograph time. Now. <laughs> no. That's why you need words. That's why you need words. Yes, it's because... It's difficult. And that's yeah. why you, did, you, know, you I, wrote on... I began to write on photographs with the frustration, with the silence of the medium. You know, if I showed you a picture of uh, Elizabeth, you know, it doesn't tell you anything about her. It shows what she looks like and you know, good time girl and things like that, but, <laughs> no? Sure. I only know what I read. <laughs> so, anyway, but uh, I forgot what I was talking about. I got so dazzled by that. But, uh, no, but I began to, to, first of all, I began to tell stories. I didn't buy into the decisive moment. I wanted what happened a moment before. Now, remember that wonderful photograph by Bresson, the guy jumping and about to land in the puddle? Mm -hmm. I liked to have seen him leaping and then splashing into the puddle. So I would just, I wanted to know what happened the moment before and the moment after. And that freed me from, from the tyranny of the decisive moment, the single frame. And nobody said to me, oh, Duane, you, that's good, do it again. Or when Gary Winogram, 
my favorite, came to the, my, my, under, my first exhibit of sequences, and he, he walked out and he said, What's, that's not photography. You know, because he knew what photography was and nobody else did. No, no, each one of you invents. Not only do you invent your life, but you invent your art. Everything about you is your invention. And if you're bored, then reinvent yourself. Anyway. I think, I think young people do this these days. I think they're much freer. Well, yeah, we got it. And then I began to write with photographs. I told you about my mother and father's picture. When my dad died, I wrote, I wrote like 10 things I got off my chest, you know. No, but you, only you can free yourself. And if you, again, if you don't care, then why should anybody else care? And this is your trip. You're not going to be duplicated. You don't have to be Einstein. You don't have to be Merle. You don't have to be, you're the original, the Alpha and the Omega, the once in a lifetime history of the universe offer, and you don't even know it. So I'm going to give you some subjects that I think uh -oh. your work. We're in trouble. <laughs> I don't think so. Death. Hmm? Death. 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 Yes, I'm going to die. Okay. Right. Well, You're going to die. That's not what I was it, after. Or what, or what do you want me to talk about? No, no. What I want you to do is I'm going to give you some subjects that oh. you have done in your work, oh. and I want you to add to them: death, gender, sexuality, spirituality. Yes, what else? yes, and yes. Yes, right. So I, I got talk, that right. Yeah, I talk about I all those things. Good. Anything to be added? Well, I never know. I might come up with something really incredible tomorrow, and I don't say, oh, Duane, you're so old, you're going to die in a minute. Why? Why you? No. You know, I still have the energy. I got, as I said, more energy than four 20-year-old, 22-year-old. That's true. Yeah. No, no, but what was the other one? No. You, no, I'm not. No, what else? Do you there? have any new, any ones to, uh, have I left anything out? No, I, let me think about it. I'll probably come up with something. Okay. Yeah. Death, gender, sexuality, spirituality. I've talked about sexuality. I've talked about spirituality. Death by sex. Now, there's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we, did a, we did a movie called... Uh, uh, it's a mystery in the manner of Agatha Christie. It's called Abracadaver, and it's about a bunch of magicians getting together for their annual meeting, and one by one they all get bumped off. <laughs> oh, I've seen that. That, that yeah, is funny. funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark humor. Black. Black humor. Does humor come in any other color, I wonder? In Irish, do Irish have green humor? Have you ever thought of that? See? I never thought of that. No, I'll think about it. That's that's pretty good. Misspellings marked is incorrect. No, ask me. You're never going to see me again. So ask me a, a question. Is it time for questions? Yeah. Is it time for questions? I think, yeah, yes. Time? Come. It's down the hall and on the right. Please yeah. Stand up, stand up so I can, yeah. You make a better target. I think you must have really been in heaven when you got to choose whatever you wanted for the Morgan Museum show. And I wanted if you could talk a little bit about that because you had access to the well, they didn't let, no, yeah, but they didn't let me run amok, you know, I mean, I didn't, I'll take that. No, no, I, like, I love Watteau. I love, do you, if you don't know who Watteau is, look him up. You know too much about Warhol. Look up Watteau and look up Diderot. Anything that ends in a no, bingo. Look up Ditto and bingo. No, see, I did it again. No, but, no. I said, I love Watteau, and I said, so what do you got into Watteau? So we went into the W's, and and they didn't have any good Watteaus. And then, uh, the, the, I love Voltaire. You know, I, Voltaire, so can you imagine they had Voltaire's, and if you don't know who he is, look him up. They had Voltaire's briefcase. And can you imagine, he's going from Geneva to Paris in a carriage with Madame put out. Madame, get it, Madame put out, the famous French Anyway, so they're riding along, and he's squeezing her breast, and, and the, his, his uh, briefcase is bouncing up and down on his lap, not because it's bumpy, because he's got an erection. So, I, you know, see, I fill in all the dotted lines. So I was thrilled to see his briefcase. 17 what? And they had it? You know, just extraordinary. And I love Joseph, and I love Saul Steinberg. And they had this amazing, now you want to look up Saul Steinberg if you don't know who that is. God, my work is cut out here. But with, he did this amazing calendar. He reinvented the calendar. You know, he was indelible. There's nobody else like that. He's a once in the universe happening. But it was so great. So uh, yes, it was delightful. Uh, oh, there was one picture I had penis in before. Uh, you know Hans Namuth? Look him up if you don't know that. I'll stop, but you know what the idea. Hans Namath did a wonderful, wonderful picture of, of uh, 
uh, what's his name? Who? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Joseph Cornell. Get real. And I, I like that photograph so much. I had penis envy. I wanted to steal it. I mean, it was just so gorgeous. I said, well, put my name under it, you know, and spelt backwards or something like that. No, no. Uh, so that was the great delight. That, and what was so great about this mu music? Music. Yes, ask me about music. One was so great about the music is you go to a photo gallery, it's a white wall, and there are pictures lined around the wall. This was three-dimensional. It had objects, it had some of my quotes. I wrote a little quote that said, and they put this on the wall, it said, uh, Little Miss Muffet, this is from my children's book, Little Miss Muffet had a very large tuffet from eating too many curds and whey. When along came a spider and sat by sat down beside her, she ate him too. <laughs> and then I wrote, well, thank you, madam, the lady in the blue shirt. And then I wrote another one, said, you know what I'm going to have on my tombstone? Having a wonderful time, wish you were here. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> you go to the cemetery and, there's, and people are laughing, you know. I remember that. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Maybe yes. some more questions. Yes, man back there. Um, what's the most exciting? Uh, Speak up. What's the most exciting um, uh, excitement about making public all your thinking? You know, maybe oh, no. When you started. No, no, it's nice, but it's the doing. It's the doing, the, really. And then I, oh, there it is. No, but it's, it's that omega, the omega, omega, bingo, that moment, you know. I won. I mean, it's that moment of having an idea that I think is interesting and then making it happen, making it become real. And then make it Make it, yeah, and then getting a pot. I'm not the kind of guy who likes a, a, a drawer full of poems nobody read. I like getting things published, you know, and I've been published a lot, and it's always thrilling. And then you get, when you get old, you have a lot of takes, like on the sequences. I'm, be, I'm beginning to see my own work. I've just done it, but at this ex oh, with this exhibit, I'm beginning to see it. That sounds strange, but here's what I mean by that. When I did, chance meeting. I did it because I thought it was a great idea. But now that I see it, it's really a great idea. I mean, it really is a wonderful thing. Not to just photograph the accident, of, but actually to set up something and to take an ordinary moment like passing somebody in a moment of recognition. And then, that's theater. So these, these are theaters, you know. It's lovely. I can't wait to see what I'm going to think of next. What? They're telling me what? I got to get out? What? Time to go? Oh. Not yet. Questions? Okay, ask me another. More questions? Yes, madam. Would you stand up so I can? There. You said you saw your mother. Louder, you louder. You said you saw your mother in your dream? No, in real life. Oh, in real life. Yeah, but she was she dead. Was dead. So she you, said, I never liked you. Do you create in your dreams? Do you, do you no, create I don't dreams? create dreams. They happen. It's my mind does. I mean, when you I, dream, do you feel like, do you ever get out of your dream? No, I've had, I've had, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, have I used my yes. dream? No, no, I forget them two minutes later. But, you know, when I go to sleep, I put myself to sleep because I hear a drum roll. Then I'm asleep and then the dream appears. Why don't, you know why photographers don't photograph dreams? Because they're not visible. And that's the very reason to photograph them. The best things are invisible. Don't show me what, te I, again, tears look like. Why is she crying? What does it feel like to have, what about a moment like this? A woman, oh, okay, this is private, but I'll tell you anyway. My mother got knocked out, but it's a history. I can't imagine my mother at 19, this nice Catholic girl, going home and telling her mother and father in 1931 that she was pregnant. Oh my God, this shit really hit the fan. I mean, I cannot imagine what she went through, her anxiety. Now, do some, photograph that. Now, that's something. That's something. That's a bullshit. That's something. So I'm not just going to show you a picture of my mother, but I could write under and say, do you know what this lady went through? And then her, my, my aunt, my father's sister, had, a, had the nerve to say to me when I was old, your father, your mother was so crazy about your, my da you know, your dad that he came and came down to his own house to find him. She came to find him, you asshole, to tell him she was pregnant. 
Now that's stuff to write about. Don't photograph people in Brazil. Photograph your own pain. Anyway, I may make a movie here. We, I think we have a movie. <laughs> oh, oh, there's a lady right here. She's giving me the finger. I better answer. It. <laughs> yes, all right. I see the finger. Stand up. Stand it's up. Sort of, it's sort of a follow-up to that. Um, you share so much of your personal life and history yeah. with us, yeah. um, which I really appreciate. Is there ever a line you won't cross, or will you share it all? And to follow up, how do you share the things that are painful? I mean, do you ever not want to share them, or do you feel like because that's who you are? I share everything with Sonny. Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Sonny and Cher. Uh, Jesus Christ. My nickname was Sonny. I, that's, I talk about I We're Sonny Boy Films. Yeah, that, there's that, you know, I just... I get so excited about something, and then I have to figure out how to do it. And it, I have a lot of things I don't show. And uh, yeah. so nothing is off limits. No, it depends. It really depends. It depends on the audience. I would. I went up to Trump Tower three times to march, and we made a little movie about me marching in front of Trump Tower. Uh, so there's. You should deal with your angers. You know. I, uh, I did a lot of political things. I did a, a sequence called Christ in New York. And it's about Christ comes back to New York, and he sees a young woman who's being uh, 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 boarded, and what she goes through. I mean, you know, it's, it's just a polite stuff. And this is what a sunset looks like. I know what sunsets look like. Oh, and this is what uh, Times Square looks like. Yeah, I've been there. I know about Times Square. Show me what's going on with that that lady in the corner who's crying in Times Square, it's right at the corner of 45th. Or, why is she? What's going on there? What's that about? So, but let's get back to the question. Oh, what was the question? Okay. Oh, is there, are they off limits? Well, I mean, especially, I mean, you're sharing this history with your, of your partner yeah. and other meaningful moments in your life. Yeah. Do you feel that there is anything that you wouldn't want to share? Or well, do you feel like it's part of... I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there is. But one thing I'll say is I'm authentic. I love authentic. I don't do things for the art world. I don't make art. I never call what I do art. Please, get that fart word out of here. And I hate when young people talk about, oh, I do my art. You don't have any art. You don't even know what art is. It takes long. My best friend was art. That's art. No, get over the word art. It's such an awful word. It has all the cankers and barnacles and Michelangelo and Picasso on it. You know, <laughs> don't, don't be so smart ass. Just do something real. I hate art. And I don't like the art world. Well, you don't hate art. I hate art. You don't like the art world. I don't like the art world. That's two different things. Magritte is an artist. If you're going to get a mean, <laughs> <laughs> don't you hate contradiction? <laughs> More questions. I've grown up in the back with a beard. Yes, thank you. Can you, uh, can you talk about the use of the mirror in your work? Is it just a device, or is there something more there? No, I'm uh, very vain. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, I love mirrors. I always loved Alice in Wonderland. And an early sequence I did was called Alice's Mirrors, and it's about mirrors. And you know, I th when you went if, to the exhibit, there was a big convex, concave, concave mirror when you walked in. And immediately it throws you off because it, everything's upside down and it's disorienting. And I love that. I bought that mirror in Bath in England. I saw it in, a, in an antique. I brought it back on a plane. I came back with a mirror. Uh, anyway, very vain. But, uh, yeah, mirrors introduce you to another reality. I did a thing about quantum physics for French Vogue, and I did a whole thing about going down in the rabbit hole, you know, in, in the mirror and the whole thing. It's, you know, mirrors are amazing. Uh, the first picture I saw of Magritte was the lady looking in a mirror. Uh, total contradiction. And I said, what the hell is that? How could that possibly be? You know? And because of my curiosity, and then I thought, well, that's interesting. No, I, I, oh, I'll tell you a secret. No, I won't. No, here's what I'll tell you. I have a pattern of behavior, which I'm old enough now to see. When I get interested in something, I thoroughly get involved in it. Uh, when, I, when I got involved with Magritte, we only necked. That's all it was. I, you know, I went to Brussels. I did two books on him. I, uh, and the year I did the book, uh, photographed him was the year in 1966 he had his first this one man show up moment they used my book on the cover I was so thrilled but I got into, and I owned him a Greek painting I owned him a Greek drawing and then when I got involved with Balthus 
you know, I went to Rossinier. I photographed him at the end of his life. I had a Balthus, two Balthus drawings. I just, I read everything about him. Oh, a little known fact. Vermeer was born in eight, 1632. Haydn was born in 1732. Manet was born in 1832. And I was born in 1932. Am I the only one who sees a pattern? It's so obvious to me. And, and I can't wait to see you. Have a baby in 2032. I'm just telling you. You're warned. No, but uh, like that. No, I love mirrors. And I, and I do, I get my, see, I don't need assignments. I don't need anybody to give me an assignment. Because remember, remember when I said in the movie, my curiosity saved me? If you, don't have, if you leave this school asking fewer questions than when you got here, then you didn't get an education. More questions, I got a six pack, yes. Hi, hi, Dwayne. Hi. Um, earlier in the interview, you were talking Mr. about- Mr. Michaels, please. Mr. Michaels, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, early in your interview, you were talking about your morality and the differences in your age when you were a younger artist and an older artist. Yeah. And you also spoke about how as you grew older, you felt more free. And I was just yeah. wondering if there's any way for me to feel free as a younger person for you to pass that older knowledge onto a younger mind. No. No. <laughs> but, but why is that? But why is that? No, because you're young. I mean, just, as I said earlier, you know, I could only, reading 100 love stories and falling in love are two different things. I'm an empiricist, look it up. That means somebody who believes in only true knowledge is direct experience. So until I went to the army and all that kind of bullshit, could I write about, I, I, you know, I'm not, I can't say that worked for me. I can only w write out of truth and curiosity and there are things I know, like, I, you have too much hair. See, I'm totally bald. <laughs> this is what you're supposed to look like. This is the perfect man. Okay. No, yeah. You don't tease, too. You don't tease. But it's the... <laughs> it didn't work, did it? No. Um, no, but... but you should, I you just, know, that's what you've been doing all evening. You know, you're passing on how you think and what you I know. You if you didn't get you know. up, what I've just... Been, I can't give anybody lessons on how to do it. You know, first you drop your pants. No, never mind. See? <laughs> But uh, no, <laughs> we don't have to actually have to do that. I'm not apologizing. You get the good stuff, you get the bullshit too. All right. No, just live and don't try to make art. Try to be angry. You can make style. You can do a lot of things that look like art, that smell like art, that sound like art. Oh, I'll tell you what to do. See, the photography world is very uptight. And in the art world, you could do it. Here's, oh, I did a movie called Fart Art. It's a, I didn't bring it. Anyway, uh, here's what you do. Uh, um, you, go to, you go to Moscow and you photograph, you pee on the wall and you photograph at, one, at noon and you photograph your, or you could photograph somebody pissing you on the wall. Then you go to Paris and you know, you, you know the Garde du Nord and you pee on the wall at one o'clock. Then you go to London pee on, and then and then you have a show at MoMA and it's called Piss Heart. You just, it's like any kind of, Bruce Dahlman spitting water out of his mouth. <laughs> that's, that's high school hygiene. Don't be cute. So much of art is cute. It's cute art. I hate cute art. Am I cute? No. <laughs> Are you writing this? I didn't see anybody take notes. <laughs> Chris's are marked as, uh, misspellings are marked as incorrect. More questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the lady, the lady with a fish in, on, her, on her head. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, you mentioned the rule when you talk about school. Um, it's, and many artists and many great art movements also br break the rule. Yeah. And do you think is breaking the rule also a rule for art? Well, yeah, well, uh, yeah that's interesting. The, the thing is, here's the basic principle. I'm not Diane Arbus. Why should my photographs look like hers? I'm not Ansel Adams. Why should my photographs look like hers? You have to find out who you are and go there. But you, in the process, you have to break rules. When I became a photographer at 28 or something, and you know, I knew that a little bit about photography. There were no galleries. But when Gary Winogrand walked out, it, I would have said, oh, Gary Winogrand, he's a big name. Well, what does I know? Maybe I'm, no, I don't need anybody's approval. And then you go where it takes you. I like to write. I think if you have any talent, you should exercise it. I have a friend who really good, he's good at writing music. 
And he won't, I mean, he wrote some of the music for the movie. I said, what the fuck's wrong with you? I, get, I said, you have to write me one tune a month. He won't do it on his own. You know, you know that story, I never quote the Bible, but there's a story in the Bible. It's about a, a guy, father, he gives his son talents. Talents, whatever that is. And they come back a year later. One son buried his talent in the ground. Another son gambled it away and drank it away. And the third son returned it as it is. Everybody's born with a hand. Some people get very good hands, and some people get very bad hands. And it all depends on how you play your hand. When I was born, my DNA and your DNA dicta dictated that I would be 5'8", that I would be bald by the time I was 30. I had nothing to do with this. I come from a skinny family. I wouldn't be big, and I would be gay. These are all givens. And my social di DNA dictated 1932. I had nothing to do with this, but we were Catholics. Eastern European, my dad worked in a steel mill, we were bottom feeders, we had no social credentials that mattered, no college education, nothing. We didn't even live in Chauncey Circles where you wanted to live. We lived on High Street, which was a dirt street. You know, and I was given, and I should have married Loretta Petrick. She was in high school. I liked her a lot. We were good friends. You know, and I you know, I would be married today if I'd followed the trajectory. I would have three kids, live in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, teach English in McKeesport High School, it'd be suicidal. But I, you know. Yeah. And the trouble with Loretta was, it wasn't Loretta, it was me. I didn't want to fuck Loretta. Without desire, you know, that's what it is. Hey, thank you. Did I answer? I'll bet I didn't answer your question. <laughs> I know, but it seems like you have time for two more questions. I've been kicked out of better schools than this. <laughs> well, you want to keep going, it's up to No, no, I, well, I, you know, I, whether the traffic can bear, I'm, I can go on forever. Yeah, look, man, with, I see a big hand in the air. Stand hi. up, please. Oh, now I see a little person. Now she's getting bigger. Short, she's, um, oh, hi. she's big. Oh. Um, I loved what you had to say about pursuing your curiosity and um, being brave enough to make mistakes. And I was wondering if you had any advice for when you're pursuing your ideas, how do you make sure that you're pursuing it to its fullest? Mm -hmm. And when you're working on projects, how do you know that you've reached a level that it's deep enough, that it's, you know, finished? Well, it's interesting because sometimes when I'm working and my assistant is there and they'll say, well, I think we have it. And I, and I say, no, we don't have it yet. It's an instinct. It's a, it's a 12th sense. It's, a, it's an instinct. I just, I sense it. I know that's right. Or sometimes there's a flavor. It's, it's not... It's not soup yet. Is it soup yet? No, it's not soup. You know, you know you just, it's like this. You develop, a, you hone, fine tune your instincts. And that's one of the instincts is to sense that, you know. Two more questions. And somebody give me a finger way in the back. Yeah, that gentleman. Yeah, you. Up. Mr. Michaels, do you think that uh, acting in your own short films is that one element that makes it interesting for the viewers? No, in spite, of my, in spite of my acting. I don't call it acting, I call it pretending. Yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, like, what's that one thing that makes you want to act in your own movies? I can't find anybody else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you know, it's, it's method acted, acting, yeah. I don't pretend, I, I don't have any, but it's true. When I, you know, at the end, when I, uh, when I cried, that wasn't acting. That was, that was, that was method acting, that was real acting. And one last question. Two hands, that's an urgent question. It's down the hall on the right, okay. Um, because like, I have a question that, um, how, uh, how could we use our personal experience as a shared experience and universal, or I shouldn't uh, worry about that? Don't worry about anything. And no, no, don't worry. Please don't worry. You know, nothing to worry about. If you're going to worry about that, that's not you. You're getting in the way of yourself. Don't worry about anything. You got two choices: doing and bullshit. And worry will get between you and the bullshit. So don't do that. No, but <sighs> curiosity. Have enough curiosity to wonder what that looks like. Do something simple. Uh, I did a picture early on. It was called uh, "Somebody Going to Heaven." It was a guy in my at top floor of my house walking up a flight of steps into the light. And then it became a, a Life magazine gave me a, a cover to do, Death, and I did a version of that. Go ahead. It was, photograph yourself walking up a flight of steps. 
photograph your best friend. I did a little, we did a whole thing. It, I never got, went all the way with it on the first date. We did a whole thing about, I call it the simultaneous now. And we photographed Maya, my assistant, coming out of the subway at 14th Street with three different cameras, or four, and as she comes up the subway, she trips and she has a bouquet of flowers, and she falls. And the flowers go, and she goes, falls down. She falls up a flight of steps. And we was photographed from three different angles, so you see her falling towards you, the simultaneous now. And uh, I didn't know if that was good, but I like the idea. So do it, maybe it's lousy. Do, do, do it. But do something simple, walking up a flight of steps, drinking a cup of coffee, something simple. You're drinking, see here, here I go, drinking a cup of coffee and uh, there's somebody next to you on a cell phone. Oh, you know what pisses me off? <laughs> oh, a lot of, no. I was in, I did, a, the first movie was that we did was about this. It was about, um, I was in a cafe and a coffee shop and these two women your age were sitting next to me and this was a conversation like, like oh my God, oh my God, like, 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 I, I said no, like you, what, like, you said no, like, like, I, I, like, you said I don't, like, I don't, I don't believe like you said that. Like I did, I did, I, like I said it. So I did a whole movie about that. So <laughs> here's a little sequence, here's your assignment. A young woman said, two women are in a coffee shop uh, having a cup of coffee. And the next table, this old man, me, is sitting reading a newspaper. This is the movie, that was the movie. And then I, still, I keep hearing like, like, I really get annoyed. And so as I leave, I pick up my cup of coffee and I spill it on a woman's head. And how do you like that? <laughs> I just made that up right now. Thank you. That's Don't film it, I'm it. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Are we, uh, I, I could go on, I, I'm having a good time. And since I may be dead next week this time, <laughs> oh boo hoo, get over it. Is that it? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. No, ask me a question. Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I don't know who's Gary Winogrand guy that you guys been talking about. I don't know, but I, I like your work, so I'm. I, right. I'm pretty sure you are much better than that Winnie Grand person. You don't have to kiss my ass, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'm curious, uh, you talk about, I, I think about death as well at some point, and then we mm -hmm. all do. Uh, uh, if you could live a hundred more years, but no, <laughs> will you do it? That's the first question. And my second question is that uh, my son asked me, is there meaning to life? And I, I mm. don't have an answer yet. I have an answer. You could help me with that. That's going to cost you a dollar. <laughs> meaning of life comes out. No, I'll tell you, my uh, life has no meaning. There's no Jesus, there's no God, there's no boom, 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 boom. No, it, the meaning in these, this brief, we, we are a fart in time, and in this brief fart, it's the meaning we bring to it. The only meaning life has, now, if I decided when I was in high school, I had to be what the world wanted to be. So, if I wanted to be a loving world, I had to be a loving person. If I wanted to be an unprejudiced world, I would be an unprejudiced person. And you have to be, you, I cannot expect from anybody what I'm not prepared to give them. So you have to be what the world is, and there is no meaning. So think of a meaning. That's, whatever meaning you come up, that's the meaning. Yes, lady. Lady in red. What do you love? What do you love in that hot and heavy world? Those are a number of cat categories. Love, hot, and heavy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in that order? Oh, what well, I get angry? Yeah. I can't, I have open heart surgery. I cannot get too angry. <laughs> oh, uh, one, i just tell you, uh, one last thing. I had a terrible thing. I had an open heart surgery at Beth Israel about five years ago, and I had six bypasses. I was going for seven, my personal bet, but anyway. So while I was on the operating table, the doctor woke me up and he said, Mr. Michaels, Mr. Michaels, we discovered you're, you don't have any heart issues at all. Your problem is that your dick is so big that when you get excited, all the blood goes from your heart to your dick and you think you're having a heart attack. But we know the, the problem is if we give you a penis reduction and they gave you, and, and I've been fine ever since. Yeah. You were dreaming. It was a dream, yes. <laughs> that was an almost real story. I, I forgot your question, my dazzlement. What do you love? What's your, what are you kind of heavy for? What's, how do you 
First of all, we trivialize the word love. The love is very serious. You know, oh, I love what you're wearing. I love Gary Winogrand. I love, no, no. We trivialize language so deeply. Don't you just love that? No, no, I think love is when, oh. Yeah, now that comes when you're lucky. But no, it's like when I realized what love was when Fred died. Uh, love is when the other person's welfare means more to you than your own. And that's why Trump will never love anybody because nobody could possibly. He's the, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I said this. No, I don't know. I have no okay. idea. Okay. I got to go. Can I go now, Mr. Traub? Oh. <laughs> oh. I had promised when I saw you at the Morgan with my yeah. husband. Yeah, yeah. The little camera. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you. I put my photos up. Oh. Okay. You can. I can't. Who left the phone? 